talk about building a career. And if there's anything exciting in the world of English language teaching. So, to begin, and I'm talking specifically with reference to Southeast Asia, but if you have questions about anywhere else, I've also managed schools in Australia and New Zealand. So, let's start. The lifestyle. Does anyone here have a maid or a housekeeper? Any hands up? Does anyone regularly call in for a massage on your way home from work? Nobody? Does anyone regularly eat breakfast, lunch and dinner in a restaurant? Does anyone spend their holidays on dazzling beaches? Does anyone live this way and still save money? Well, welcome to the lifestyle of an English language teacher in Southeast <coughs> Asia. But, not all language teachers live this way. Good choices will get you that lifestyle. Poor choices, you will work round the clock for peanuts. So you need to look beyond a website. So what we're going to do is look at two different websites and I want your first impressions and then we'll go back and unpick them and see what they're really saying. So the first one I'm going to show you four pages from their teacher recruitment site. The benefits of an ESL job in Indonesia. And they give you quite a few things. Competitive local salary, legal work visas, accommodation allowance, property insurance, round trip and flight reimbursement, medical insurance, academic support, professional development. It looks impressive? Anyone think that looks impressive? Second page, adults, ESL teaching jobs, the same company. You can see something that looks very professional going on here. British Council forecasts there will be over 2 billion people speaking or learning English by 2020. So there are lots of jobs available. Page 3, sorry. They give you something about the cost of living in Indonesia, about teaching English in Indonesia. This looks very helpful. They're giving you lots of information. You can click on a video and see this person's experience and for yourself. If you're going alone, going it alone, teaching English in Indonesia can feel daunting at first, but don't worry, exclamation mark. We're here to make the whole process as easy and stress-free as possible. Again, very nice. And then they give you seems to have frozen. Then they give you a page on the cost of various items. That is definite. They give you a page, let's see if I can do it again. Maybe try the space bar. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there we are. They give you information on Comparative costs of what breakfast will cost, etc. And then they give you a page of information about benefits of a teaching job in Indonesia. There are many benefits to starting a teaching job in Indonesia, blah, blah, blah. Housing allowance, etc. Generous annual leave allowance. Now, first impression is it all looks very good. But a website can be a very deceptive thing, especially if you're not used to the world of language teaching. So let's go back and look at these pages again. Let's start with the first one. The first trap on this page that you need to look for is right here. Competitive local salary. Local is something you don't want to see. Salaries in Southeast Asia are very different from here. Local and overseas salaries are wildly different. 
Anybody want to guess at the average salary of a bilingual school receptionist in Vietnam? Per month. Have a guess. Dollars, pounds? Pounds. 300? That would be, that would be good. More like 300 US dollars a month as a salary. So when you see the words local salary, alarm bells should ring. A local teacher teaching English, as qualified as you, will earn half as much as you. So you need to look for something that has an international pay rate. You don't necessarily spot that at first sight. It says also legal work versus, that's good. Housing allowance, property insurance, round trip flight reimbursement, academic support, good. Paid vacation in addition to public holidays. That's something you might think you can take for granted, but you can't. In Thailand, for example, there is no automatic right to annual leave. You have, you have public holidays, but you have no automatic right to it. You may work for a company that offers it, but don't take it for granted. You need to look at a contract and see if it actually exists. Now, alarm bells keep ringing here. You might not be able to see very clearly, but it just this point here, it says, teaching English to adults isn't much different from teaching kids. Well, that rings a bit of an alarm bell to me, firstly, because it is, and secondly, because I don't think that's something they should be putting on a job advert. You can still have fun with your students, use games and role plays, but you'll also have the opportunity to connect with your students on a deeper level. That's not particularly what you want to see in a job advert. Cost of living in Indonesia. Living in Indonesia is like living anywhere else in the world. Many items are cheap, especially when shopping at local markets. What's the relevance in that? This, by the way, is an international organization that you may all know the name of. What's the relevance in saying it's like anywhere else in the world? Everywhere's like anywhere else in the world to that extent. Uh, teaching in Indonesia gives you the best of both worlds, a strong career and an adventure. Who are they pitching this at? I'm not sure. So far, I haven't seen anything that's got a very professional focus. The costs of living, and this is all copied directly from their website. Now, you have to treat job message boards with a fair degree of skepticism. People who post on them often have an axe to grind. I wouldn't want to Google myself on a job message board. People I've upset during my career have probably posted some shocking things about me. But if you're looking for a job for the first time, it might be worth taking a look. No, you can't see me, nor can I, actually. <laughs> but this is, this is somebody commenting on that job we've just seen. I want to share some information about those looking at this job. I completed an interview with them. Here are the details. 640 US dollars a month, no allowance for accommodation, no flight reimbursement, one night paid hotel when you land, then you're taken around the next day to look at apartments, 40 hour work week, <coughs> almost exclusively teaching in a cubicle with adult students online, Hours of teaching 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And sketchy work visa situation. After your rent, you're being paid, no, you're being paid around four pounds an hour, maybe having $200 a month after paying your rent. Now this is a global organization. 
don't let that take you in when you first look at an advert. Global organisations may have very good quality schools in the UK, but their schools in other countries very well might be franchised, very well might be completely different to the UK original. There may be absolutely no comparison. If we just go back to this, what does the professional development consist of? A 120-hour TEPL certificate. They're taking on people who are not qualified and putting them through, if they want it, a 120-hour TEPL certification. This would be an appallingly bad job to go for. And yet the website looks quite attractive at first sight. The name of the company is well known. I can imagine a lot of people thinking this could be an adventure. Let's go for it. Now we're going to look at another one. And you'll straight away see the difference. Now, there are no bells and whistles. There are no pictures of a market. But straight away, this one is telling us the job description. We didn't see a job description on the previous advert. Um, this centre in Haiphong is the largest centre nationwide with a dynamic and enthusiastic teaching team of 20, teaching young learners, adults and corporate classes. We didn't see that in the previous, job, the previous advert. We have 25 years of experience teaching English in Vietnam, currently operate more than 40 centres, um, teaching young learners, 3 to 17, adults 17 plus, with the goal of creating a rewarding and high quality learning environment. Straight away you can see the difference, can't you? This one rings true. This looks like a company you can, you can trust a bit more. It's not telling us teaching adults is not much different to teaching kids. It's telling us real stuff. At, it's called Apollo. At Apollo you can expect a commitment to ongoing professional development and high quality teaching standards and so on. Next page. What they want from you. Planning communicative student centres and participative lessons while following a designated syllabus. Participating in professional development activities. These include training sessions, peer observations, and something else. Teaching across a range of levels, ages, and courses, administering and mark marking tests, writing reports, placement testing, teaching off-site, and then it tells you average teaching hours, 18 to 22 a week. Straight, you can see the difference. This job tells you everything you need to know. Your qualifications, you're not going to get a job here without having a SELTA. And it even tells you how much tax you're going to pay. This one, this company has a commitment to providing students and staff with excellent conditions that are spelled out from the start. If you're teaching in Southeast Asia, you need to be flexible. You must be flexible. You might, you'll find yourself teaching children and corporate, because these are the two big markets. General English teaching everywhere is in decline. The standard in state schools is so good that what people want are young learner English and business English. You will definitely have to teach them. Um, you might have specialized courses. I've put up there English for bodyguards. This was a course I had to write in Vietnam. Um, you might find you might find things that you will never ever teach here in the UK because 
they're only for a local market, um, for secretaries, for supermarket staff. These people will never come to the UK for English language classes, but as a local market, that's what people will sell to. Um, you may teach in different locations, you may have to teach. I think if you teach in Tokyo, you will probably work in four or five different locations and you have to get on your bicycle and get around the city. You might very well teach split shifts, in other words, morning and evening. You teach when people are available. Classes take place in the evening. Schools are often very quiet in the day, really busy after six o'clock. The same goes for the weekend. You'll be teaching at the weekend, for sure. Teaching is a very well-respected profession. All your students will expect you to love your job. Culturally, there are differences in expectations. In Vietnam, I had an American teacher who went into town on her day off one day and she was wearing jeans that were really ragged, fashionably slashed. She came across one of her students with his father. The father was so outraged that he slapped her. Because in this country, we don't have peasants. We have rich and poor, but we don't have the exceptionally poor that you find in Southeast Asia, where people will live in a bamboo hut with literally not one stick of furniture. Um, they have chickens and they grow rice and that's all they have. So if you have a job like a teacher and you appear to dress in rugs, this is considered a huge affront and a lack of respect to your job. Not something you have to think about here, but there you do. Also, which might come as a surprise to us Westerners, your students will love their country. Love it. Here we're so used to criticizing our country, criticizing our government. Comes as a shock. They don't. If you ask Vietnamese students, where's the best, which country has the best beaches? Vietnam. I did an exercise in Singapore once where I was trying to teach students the construction, um, a, a negative followed by a positive. And one of the examples I gave was Shakespeare. Shakespeare was not American. He, uh, Shakespeare, oh, I can't remember exactly. It was like Shakespeare wasn't American. He was English. But the answer was, they gave, well, Shakespeare wasn't American. He was from Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? And all of them were like that. Everything was from Singapore. This is ridiculous. But in every country, people will be passionately proud of their country. If they hear you criticizing your country, oh, I couldn't wait to get away from England. I wanted to come to a Buddhist country. It's so much nicer. They'll just not believe you because the concept of criticizing your own country, even if they have a shocking government, it's just alien. They won't respect you. They won't like it. Similarly, when you turn up for work, you have to look like a teacher. Even if it's 35 degrees, you can't go in wearing a top with spaghetti straps because teachers don't. You wear a shirt. Criticism and irony are not welcome. They're generally not understood. They're perceived to be negative. Anything perceived to be negative is not welcome. So, preparing for a job, if you're going to Asia, get together all your qualifications, get them notarized. In other words, you go to a lawyer who's a notary 
and you get them signed and stamped by him. Make at least three sets of copies and leave one at home. You must take originals of everything to get your work permit. Get a criminal records check done in the UK. The good schools will want them. That advert for Apollo that I showed you when it had what qualifications they want, they want a criminal records check. And write a cracking CV. And on your CV, first impressions count enormously. If I get a CV and I have from someone whose email address is pistersafart.com, <laughs> it goes in the bin. <laughs> it has to look professional. A poorly designed or boastful CV will go in the bin. My teaching skills are outstanding. My students have always loved me. I don't think so. <laughs> I never have problems with classroom management. Yeah, yeah. List your strengths. It's amazing how boring some CVs can be. Really, don't start with your high school, then your university. Start with your career objective. Why are you doing this? What do you want out of it? Put that at the front so whoever's looking for people knows. They don't have to spend 20 minutes reading through something really dreary to find out why you've applied for the job. Tell them at the start of your CV. List your strengths, list your teaching interests, list your career goals. Don't include irrelevant stuff. What seems cool in the UK does not seem cool in Asia. Don't put, if you had a university job as a bin man, don't put it on your CV. They don't want to know. It should be teaching only, it should be focused, it should be clear. Um, and that's how you got an interview. All a CV does is get you an interview. Make sure the people reading it know why you've applied in the first place. But you don't have to draw it out if you. Um, people, a lot of people apply for jobs. If I, I, I advertised jobs last week, I had about 70 responses. Out of that, I'm going to interview three. Um, some of them were just not what I need in, in the job, but some of them, just that the, the presentation was so bad that I didn't want to meet these people. So think about it. Um, put your, present yourself as you want to be seen to somebody making a choice. And make sure you back up your CV with really clear information about why you want to teach with them. The more you research about the company, the better the impression. If you've read their blogs, if you've read their Twitter, if you watch them, if you follow them on Facebook, if you've learned a bit about the structure, you'll get an interview. If you write to, instead of, I work for Melton College, if instead of Melton College you put Dear Leeds School of English, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to call you because you've sent out the same blanket CV to everybody and you haven't paid attention. And I'll assume that that negligence carries through into the classroom. So there you are. Find a job. There's, you can easily find a job in Southeast Asia. You could get one tomorrow, but getting a good one takes a little bit of work on your part. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks.